This is Dr. Yusuf. Today, I'm going to talk about communication. So, today's talk focuses on what communication is. Communication animates life. When we study communication, we use different perspectives. A perspective is a way of viewing or seeing a particular phenomenon. In other words, a perspective is a lens through which communication processes can be viewed and appreciated. More precisely, there is not a single lens through which communication phenomenon can be viewed. Rather, there are different lenses viewed or used to view and appreciate different communication processes. Therefore, different perspectives are used in defining and analyzing communication process. In other words, there is no one correct way of defining and analyzing communication. People define terms in different way and in this way those differences in definitions can have profound impact on the extent to which we understand each other and move forward with both academic and everyday life. In other words, it is better to evaluate definition in terms of their utility rather than in terms of their correctness, goodness or badness. Let's consider two different definitions of communication to understand what communication means. The first definition is given by Hovland and his colleagues in 1953. According to this definition, communication is a process by which an individual, the communicator, transmits stimuli, usually verbal message, to modify the behavior of other individuals' audience. Now, we go to second definition. The second definition is given by Weaver in 1949. According to this definition, communication is all of the procedures by which one mind affect another mind. Now, let's try to understand what these two definitions mean. According to first definition given by Hovland and his colleagues, Communication is relatively a narrow view of saying the processes what are going in practical or academic life. According to this definition, communication is defined as one-way activity including verbal signal used to modify another person's behavior which we call audience. In other words, according to Hovland and his colleagues definition, communication is a process in which source, what we call sender, sends a stimuli which we call messages, usually verbal messages. And then what is the purpose of those the verbal messages? Their purpose is to modify or change the behavior of the individuals which we call audience. So in more precise terms, according to this def definition, communication is an activity which primarily includes verbal signals to modify behavior of the audience. In contrast to this definition, Fever's definition is incredibly broad, including all the procedures by which one mind can have effect on another mind. So, let me give you an example of this second definition. Take an example, if you plant a flower in your lawn, Another person, if notices this activity, this would count as communication. So what does it mean? Your way of planting the flower and other, another person's view of noticing that both count as communication. In other words, this count as communication. However, for most contemporary scholars investigating communication processes, Neither of these two definitions would be good in terms of their utility. Why? Because the first definition given by Hovland and colleagues is very narrow in scope. However, the second definition given by Weaver is very broad that includes everything as a communication. So let's move now to another definition which is more important in terms of utility. According to this definition, Communication is the management of messages for the purpose of creating meaning. Now, this definition has two very specific terms. The first is that communication is management of messages. 
The second, this management is done for the purpose of creating meaning. So I think if we consider communication from the utility perspective, this definition is more significant to understand the communication process. Why? Because this definition has two dimensions. First, communication is intentional activity. And the second, this also captures the other aspect that communication can be an accidental activity. So this definition is more significant in terms of utility as compared to other two definitions which we talked about earlier in this discussion. So that's why, I mean, the contemporary communication scholars, those who investigate communication, they think that communication should be or could include both intentional as well as accidental activities. That's why this third definition and which I repeat for you now, that communication is the management of messages for the purpose of creating meaning. When we want to create meaning, it means we are doing this as intentionally. I mean, we have intention to create meaning out of the text or context. So th that's why communication is called intentional activity. And when we manage communication messages, the management of the communication can be accidental as well as intentional. So this definition, I think is more significant or it contributes important aspects to understand communication both from intentional perspective as well as accidental perspective. So this is all today. In the next episode, we will be talking about another topic. Till then, take care.